What's up everyone? I am finally back from my vacation to Japan. Japan has got to be one of my all-time favorite places to visit. Now, I was born in Burma and actually stayed one year in Japan before ever even coming to the US. And for 30 plus years, I never went back until like the last five years or so. And in the past five years, four of the past five years, I've gone back to Japan for vacation. On this particular trip, I went with Lawson and Suzanne, who have pretty much have become a fixture on this channel whenever I do go traveling. Now, we spent most of our time in Tokyo, but we also spent time in Himeji, Kyoto, and Hiroshima. Yes, that's right, they're playing Mario Kart in the streets, in the busiest intersections, in the middle of downtown Tokyo. That is a thing here. And we were thinking of even doing it, um, but we never got around to figuring out where these, uh, these races started. Um, you can dress up as any of the Mario characters. I personally would have been Bowser. Um, so I don't know which ones you would have been, but Bowser number one. My favorite things about coming to Japan pretty much is very food centric. The first day that we woke up, we decided to go to the fish market and stand in line for five hours to go to a restaurant called Sushi Dai. It's a very, very famous sushi place. Uh, previously like a three-star Michelin restaurant. They don't take any reservations. They only have about 10 seats. And the line starts at about 3 a.m. Uh, they open at about 7. And in this particular day, we showed up at about 6 o'clock and Immediately once we got in line, they dropped down this sign that basically said that they weren't taking any more people coming in for the rest of the day. And so it's, a, it's about an hour before they even open and they're done for the day taking placements in line even. Even though there's a five hour wait to get into this restaurant, it's not that bad because since there's three of us, we could send out two people at a time just to explore the market and just bring back delicious stuff uh, to the person that was waiting. So we just took different turns going around and around and around and we just ate pretty much the entire morning before our table opened up at about noon. So you might be wondering if it was worth it and I have to say it was. I'm a big sushi buff. Um, I've probably eaten at some of the best sushi restaurants on earth at this point. I've been to uh, Sukiyabashi Jiro, now I've been to Sushi Dai. And Sushi Dai is a great value if you're willing to wait. It's a three-star Michelin meal for $40. In comparison, Jiro's is like $350 per person, something like that. And it's probably, it's different, but I wouldn't say that it's necessarily any better than, than Sushi Dai. So I loved it. The other thing I love about Japan is how easy it is to get around. We have a JR Pass, which is only available for foreigners while on vacation, but essentially. And it's kind of like the golden ticket. You get to take all the, the JR trains uh, for free. Oh, well, there, there are certain lines you can't take that are like premium lines. But for the most part, it's essentially a fast transit pass to the entire country. So we spent a lot of our time on these high-speed trains called Shinkansen. And they're amazing. They are on time to the second uh, I don't know if you've heard in like the last week or so, there was like a little news story about how a Shinkansen left 20 seconds early and that prompted a public apology on television and on every print publication for being off 20 seconds. And that is no joke. They are on time to literally the second. If your ticket says 8.02, it is leaving at 8.02, zero seconds. I wasn't planning on doing anything business or reef related while I was on this vacation, but I met with uh, one person named Vlad. He was a follower of our channel for a little while now, and he was looking to start a coral farm of his own in Tokyo. And so we decided to meet for lunch, and he was a gracious, gracious host, showed us all around Tokyo that day. Um, so Vlad, if you're watching, thank you so much. That was like very, very, very cool of you to take us around. One of the stops that we had taken with Vlad was to a local fish store called Coral Lab. The owner was working on a lighting fixture, and he was doing this in a partnership with Kyosara, which is a very large uh, materials company based out of Kyoto, Japan, and also a local university to do some studies on coral biology under these lights. He had a spectrometer 
um, like a very high-end spectrometer that not only showed intensity but also uh, the different frequencies of light. And he had taken this device, which I believe was something, it cost somewhere in the neighborhood of three to four thousand dollars, built a custom enclosure, and took it to the reefs where these corals um, originally came from, mainly Australia. And he would take measurements of spectrum and intensity at different depths, in different geographies, to really pin down the spectrum that he wanted. And then from that, gave that data to Kyocera to create these custom LEDs that were encased in ceramic. Uh, Kyocera does a lot of uh, research on ceramics in particular. So you essentially have this uh, finely tuned custom LED fixture. So, and he essentially only has two types of bulbs. There's one that's a blue for, for deeper water and one that's more daylight. And I was pretty impressed with it. Typically, LEDs kind of struggle, especially when you just look at it with, uh, with an inexpensive phone camera. Uh, these are all iPhone uh, videos uh, taken of these tanks. And I have to say, just camera-wise, um, it looked better than the T5 tank next to it. And you know what a big proponent of T5 I am. I was very, very interested to see how these lights uh, would do long term. They're doing coral studies now at the university to see if it'll help with growth and coloration. I think the only thing that's, uh, that they've really documented so far is that the corals exhibit a lot more mucus production under these, uh, these experimental LEDs. So again, I'm very interested to see where these lights go. I think it'd be interesting to get one of these sensors and just get data from all over the world and design lights that could change the color profile to very specific geographies. So if you had like a, an SPS dominated tank with mainly Indonesian acros or something like that, you can just dial up the shallow water Indonesian setting and kind of replicate more or less the exact spectrum that's out there. So I don't know, what do you guys think? Lighting aside, one kind of bizarre observation that I made is that the reef aquarium industry in Japan is super tiny, and I can't quite pinpoint why. It's, it's very much more of a freshwater culture here, um, more so than in the United States. I mean, obviously the freshwater industry is a lot bigger in the United States as well. But in Tokyo, there are 12 million people and very few reef aquarium shops. So Coral Lab is one of the very few that's even around. I live in the state of Ohio. Ohio has, the entire state has 12 million people, and within 20 minutes of my house, there's probably five stores. If you're willing to travel another hour, there's probably another 10 stores all doing reef aquarium stuff. So the idea that there's only like a handful of reef aquarium stores in Tokyo boggles my mind. But yeah, it's a very, very, very tiny market compared to what we see in the US. I think it's kind of a shame because the Japanese have a very interesting aesthetic whenever it comes to doing anything artistic. And in the freshwater world, possibly the most famous uh, individual associated with planted aquariums is Takashi Amano. He recently passed away. But uh, Vlad had taken us to a local aquarium there, the Sumida Aquarium. And they had his displays, his most famous dis planted tank displays. And they were stunning to just to behold. I mean, I've never really tried to do a planted aquarium, but I mean, they are just amazing. One thing I've always kind of knocked on with uh, when it comes to reef aquarium aquascapes is there's not a lot of creativity there right now. There's a lot of tanks that just kind of have like a wall of rock look. And, and some people are now experimenting with arches and whatnot, but definitely aquascaping I think is light years behind what the planted aquarium guys are doing. And I'd like to see that type of creativity getting applied to reef aquariums. So anyways, that pretty much does it from here. Uh, obviously, I had a great time in Japan. I'm always looking forward to going back and visiting, and I never seem to spend enough time there. Uh, we spent just 10 days, and I always think that like you should spend a minimum of two to three weeks if possible. Lots to see, obviously. Before I go, a special shout out to Vlad for taking us around Tokyo, and for Yuka and Professor Sukuhara that took us around Kyoto. 
without whom we would have stayed pretty much the entire time at Kyoto Station. If anybody has been to Kyoto Station, you would know what we are talking about. So anyways, thank you guys so much. But again, um, glad to be back. The building progress is, it's kind of slower now, but we're getting going. I'll probably do an updated video on, on uh, the progression of the building here. And just a reminder, there's going to be our December live sale coming up this Saturday. So hope to see you all there. Anyways, have a good one. Happy reefing.